Hey guys and gals, welcome back to the Farmer and Sons Garage Channel. Okay, since the last time we were here on pickle, we actually, um, if you can show in here, Labe, uh, inside this right here, we actually moved those back and I welded uh, because before it was coming up through here, I was going to be in that one and then another one, but we decided to move this further back on the bottom support and weld two nuts down through so we could... Uh, bolt that support to the bottom. So I'm getting us another, you know, inch and a half further than just the original flip we did. Uh, so that was something we had to figure out after the fact I did the welded. These on the same, same way over here on this side. And we've got these two little lines which are um, in the way. Uh, that's a big difference between the 01 model that I did and this later model Crown Vic. Uh, mine didn't have these lines up here. Mine were tucked in uh, and didn't come out like this. So even with us moving the radiator back as far as we did where this is still sticking out you know two or three inches in front of the radiator we're going to need to on the core support of the trucker behind the grill and we'll have to measure from the center of the radiator over to where those lines are and then of course we'll measure, measure from this center point here over and we'll need to do like a little rectangle shape where we cut in here to make room for those. So I just want to give you guys a little uh, shot of that. So what we're probably going to do now is we will measure, uh, come back and show you when we cut on that and how that turns out so that we can try to put the front clip back on because we're still two or three inches away from getting back far enough to where it needs to be. So uh, that's the kind of the sticking point we're at right now is cutting out that little notch for those lines to come through. So that's what we're, that's what we're going to do in today's video. All right, so we're going to find the center point of the radiator. So it's about 27 and a quarter from the end to end. So with that being said, uh, 13 and three quarters is going to be the midpoint between 14 and 15 and a half of the center. Hmm, it may work out already. That's pretty close. So if I knock this out right here, we're going to be pretty close. So how far were we from? Is the two lines all that's holding us from pushing out the rest of the way back? Uh, well, we may have to trim some of this out right. and may have to trim some of this off. We'll see. Okay. I may have to trim it down to get that to set where it's level once we are there. Now Now we will back it up, set it on there, and see. I still think we're going to have to go, but I want to kind of look before I cut into it. I think we're going to, have to go up here under this mm -hmm. and maybe have to even cut into the and make a little notch because I've seen some that have done that on theirs before. Ready? Try to get it, see where it sets on that. Yeah. Okay, so the frame itself, see up here? This part, I'm going to have to notch two inches off of that. So it's going to have to go all the way back to that hole right there at the top of it. 
and down to the bottom of that little arm. Awesome, get back on on that. I looked at this day in 2020 is the day I started tearing, or I had tore the crown bit down some more. It popped up in my in your truck, uh -huh. your blue one. Mm -hmm. Autumn special. It may be close. It's going to be that bottom part for sure. Yeah, definitely. The grill's going to be close. Yeah. All right, you ready to set it off? Yeah. Good? Yeah. Take some compressed air and blow through this, and maybe some Dawn Power Wash, and then do that. You were wanting to show paint, which is it? Oh yeah. So uh, what I did was I pushed the uh, core support back in the front clip, and took some you know contrasting paint, some white paint, and marked this area that we need to notch out for the core support to slide back, and go back into this tuck in this area to give us a little extra room that we're needing because we're bumping into that or getting ready to bump into it. Same thing on this side. All the white that I've done there, we're starting at the edge of that, cut that back to there, cut down on this side, and come back up to here. So that little like C shape, we'll be cutting that out and uh, knocking that out. Then on the um, front up here, I still need to take off, and I'll have to do it on the bottom as well. We'll have to duplicate that mark down here. But we gotta take this out, and we're actually gonna need to go up under the grill and notch into this um, valance or gravel guard. So we'll go up into here and knock that out as well because we still need to go up about inch and a half, two inches to give us the clearance we need. So we're gonna have to cut all of this out, all of this out and go up under the grill. We might have to either bend the grill up or notch the grill for those lines to go through. And I've seen others that have done that as well. But that's where we're at right now.
So that's got the frames notched, or the frame notched on both sides like we need it. Now we're going to head up here to the truck core support. And do a little slice and dice in this area. So I shouldn't need to cut this because that should be sticking over in the area where it's completely wide open. So we don't need to trim any of that. But I will need to trim this area here because we need about a two inch area there. So this video is brought to you by DeWalt Used Cutting Wheel or Cutting Discs. Usually it's sponsored by, or not sponsored, but usually we purchase Warrior or whatever, Bauer, the cheapos at uh, Harbor Freight. But with gas prices like they are, it's just as cheap to go to Lowe's or Walmart, which is two miles away from us, rather than going to Harbor Freight. It's 15 miles each way so I, I can pay the extra few bucks for the decent cutting wheels I guess decent or better in the gas money I saved the way so to pickle eats get to you, see me using some decent cutting wheel today the way to pickle eats them it don't matter if they're decent or not that's true <laughs> and I always unplug it when I'm switching the blade out just to keep from having an accident happen I guess better safe than sorry. And I've got eye protection and hearing protection, so I'm being a good boy today. Okay, so I think we're ready for attempt two today. Hey, we're in the hole with that one. Yeah. I got a long way to go back this way. Oh, I know. I'm just seeing how good our little cutout did. Okay, our Two bars that go down through the are like the core support of this. Uh, what's it called? Hood latch. Yeah. And behind the grill, grill support. 
those are hitting that little, I think that's the either power steering or transmission cooler. I think it may be power steering line. Now you can see this is literally touching. So the problem I feel like we would have with that would be um, just the you know vibration of bouncing up and down the road. That eventually I think would cut through that. So what I'm going to probably do is when we pull this back off, I'll put a sock or a, um, some kind of towel or something on this. Take a pair of crescent or take a crescent wrench, kind of put on it and gently ease it up and bend this up a little bit just so that it's not touching it. And I don't really think that'll be that noticeable because I think this side's already kind of bent up anyway. Um, so anyway, these trucks kind of have bends and dings. This has got a dent in it. This has got a dent in it. So it's going to look like it's part of the truck's patina and character. So, uh, you know, we don't mind if it's got a ding here and a ding there. So we will take a little, uh, of course, we don't want to crimp it up and make it look like crap. So we'll take like a crescent wrench, tuck a little piece of cloth in there, and just gently massage that or uh, tweak that forward. So now the area we're going to need to trim is both of these posts here. Now, just like on my truck, the handle right here you pull for the um, hood, it's getting close to hitting the radiator. And I had to trim not quite half, but probably close to half of that, the depth or the width of that, length of that, whatever you want to call it. That handle has it like a J shape to it. We'll show you when we take it off, but I'm going to have to trim that a little bit to keep it from touching the radiator and messing the fins up. So we'll do the J handle on the hood, hit, hood latch or the hood handle. We're going to have to hit these two. And that's just the way I do it. I take regular uh, spray can paint, um, shoot it in a lid, take a little brush, dab it in the paint, and then I just mark where I need to cut. Um, so from right there to about right there. Oh, it's running way down, but we'll, the top of that and the bottom of that is what we're going with. I'm going to do that on both sides. So we'll hit this. This might be a stupid question. So here's where we're hitting. That's what stopped me from getting back on my side. Now, is the frame notched out right over here? Yeah. And while we're hitting on the air, uh, that's what's stopping us. This air box is catching. So I'm going to move it. Oh, we can't go any further because we're hitting these uh, power steering lines. So that's our next step is the two pieces. So you want to lift this off again yeah. and walk it back up front. You good? Didn't sound good. That plastic interfere. So this little, um, these fins and this little uh, cooler that goes in front, this auxiliary cooler that goes in front. Like I said, I think that's the power steering, isn't it? Uh, maybe, maybe the transmission cooler. Let's see where those lines go. No power steering. Yeah, those lines shoot straight. So that's your power steering auxiliary cooler. Keep your power steering cool. Uh, the transmission itself is what's down here built into the radiator. So that's these lines are the transmission lines that we're cutting for. That's what I thought. Okay, so. Um, those two core supports are two rods that run down that are part of the uh, core support itself. You can see where I've made a mark here and here. So this little section needs to be cut out. Same on this side so that the power steering um, cooler can fit in here without those fins getting damaged. And then on this, that's that handle I was telling you about that you pull the hood that you release the hood with. So we've got to cut the back part of this off because this is about to hit the Crown Vic radiator, which same, man, I banged my, when I did my blue truck, I mashed the radiator out and had to sit there. I wish I'd had one of those little combs or whatever you call it that's made to uh, the little tool that straightened the back out, but I did it with a knife and straightened those out. So to keep that from happening on this one, we'd already trimmed a little bit. I don't know if we showed that in a previous episode, but I had already cut some of this off. I'm going to go ahead and cut some more, cut these two things uh, down a little bit more and then we'll give it another shot. I need to check 
how close we are at the bottom to the actual radiator. I think we had plenty of clearance, especially since your side's already back far enough. That's amazing. You remember how, how much we had to do on mine of just cutting over and over and over? We, we thought we were there probably 15 different times and then we'd have to trim something else. Yeah. Luckily so far on mine, I had to cut notches in this that you can see through my grill. I mean, most people don't notice it because they're not coming up looking through my grill. But I don't think we're gonna have to do that on yours. I think we cut the frame back further because we moved the radiator back further on this one to clear those lines for the transmission. So I guess that extra work we did for that makes us not have to do that extra work on this one. Thank goodness. All right. Fire in the hole. We'll knock the real rough edges or the real sharp edges off just so we don't jab the cooler and cut the hole in. Before we put this on, we're probably going to clean all this up, shoot some black rust oleum all over this, probably black out the inner fenders, break all this stuff off, uh, you know, clean that off real good, maybe take it out here, pressure wash it and brush it with a wire brush or something and clean it down real good and really coat it good just to keep it from rusting out and kind of give it some extra protection before we throw it on there. We like the rough look on the outside, but we want to keep it from or as best we can keep it from just rusting away on the inside or the supports. All right, so let's give it shot number three. See how close we get. We've got, uh, how can we get up under there and bolt them in and bolt the fenders? I'll have to take it's the front clip off. Is it? I need to take the front clip off on mine because there's a couple of things I never finished, which we have to take the doors off because that one bolt is inside. I almost am tempted to do like um, Factory Fresh. Um, the guy that's doing the 60, oh, I can't remember if it's 63, doing the dark blue, almost a purple color. I can't remember, Deep Impact Blue? No. I can't remember. Either. It's the really awesome, uh, he's done two other Crown Vic swaps before this one, but this one's not a Crown Vic swap. He's doing a Mustang GT swap on a unibody. Um, he had to move, man, he did all kinds of extensive work. He's worked the new and old together uh, done a fabulous job. So look, look up Factory Fresh. Uh, it's a unibody Mustang build. Uh, he's almost finished up with it, and man, it is incredible. So um, anyway, I'll plug his channel for him because he's done such an incredible job on his. And we've sold a few notes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we always try to steal any idea. But anyway, that's his. Uh, because the, so anyway, uh, on the back of his, in the actual uh, truck, between the two holes that sink in where you bolt the door hinges back in, uh, be careful on the grill up here, make sure we don't bang. Um, he cut out like an oval shape that you can put one of those rubber plugs in to be able to get a wrench in there and tighten up that bolt that's inside on the, on the fender uh, without having to go through the um, door hinge bolt area. Oh, we got to trim this just a little bit. These power, or the, uh, the power steering lines, I've got to trim that. It's touching on the core support. Real close. So, oh, touching. we're touching over here almost. We may need to trim 
just this little edge right here. But we got to check to see how lined up we are. We may be off center. Okay, our notches we made for the power steering thing is working good. The cutoff we made on the back of the hood release is good. These power lines, oh, we didn't move the, we didn't bend that out like we talked about. So we got to do that, and we're going to trim right here. Because those go, those flare that way, or angle that way. So we're going to have to trim the core support if we're still lined up. Let me look. Yep. Man, I think we're actually going to be close. The front might need to come up, because we're going to have to raise this about a half inch back here. So the front, see, we're going to have this perfectly parallel, this line and this line. From the front to the back, we'll have to get up here and really measure with something to make sure we're perfectly parallel. That's how we're going to line up our front to back yeah. um, on both sides. Yeah, this side's sitting better as it is. And it's not on this stuff, it's just resting where yours is too. So based on where we're resting, this side over here actually looks like it's angled. But once we bolt the fender in the place in the back, this side's looking like it's about right. So where it's sitting, it looks like the right place. And I really think this one is too. Uh, I've got to cut out a little section of the core support. Dang, we're close, man. To be honest with you, this was much easier than mine, this part of it. You know, remember how much we struggled on mine? Oh, yeah. We didn't think we would ever get it to fit. But again, we didn't push the radiator back as far, so we really were slamming against the radiator on mine. This one's back at least another inch and a half, so that's giving us all this extra room. And we've cut your frame back further than I cut mine. I ended up cutting out my core support to fit the frame instead of we've done vice versa on yours. So let's pop this off one more time, bend the grill up, trim this part of the core support off, trim that part of the core support off, and I think we're done as far as the trimming we have to. Then it's just lining it up and bolting it up. Well, we've still got to finish sealing the cab back here, welding the car and the truck together back here under the fenders. You know what I'm talking about during that little curve section? So that, that'll be our, this was what we had to do before. We started. All right. So what we got to do now is this area right here, these two lines, we're touching those with the edge of the core support right on the side of the grill. Then over here, these kind of angle, you can see how it starts over here and it angles back this way, and this one does just a little too. So we're clear down here, but once we get up to about right there, it's coming over. So I've got to notch out, you know, half inch or so to clear these as it goes up this core support. That's that side to where those two little lines could fit in there without rubbing. And we've got to hit over here. Now, before I forget it for the third or fourth time, I'm going to bend that bottom piece of the grill up. Yeah, just a smidge. I don't think we need it for clearance, but we're, I mean, as far as to get it further back, but we're doing it like we said to eliminate it, rubbing a hole possibly in that line. So I did nick it one little time there. But like I said, it's not a perfect truck anyway, so. Scratches and nicks are part of the character. So we're just going to bend that up in that little section. And we can always bend it back a little bit if we need to, but I'm just going to do this to give us plenty of room, I think. All right. You good? between the uh, inner fender and the 
truck candy. That was nice. Yeah, we're sitting on anything for ice sugar. Oh, hang on. Let me see if we're lined up on the center here. Did you bend that grill? Yep. That's the only thing I see that we're hitting is the bottom of that inner fender. Uh, I just jumped off up here. Okay, my sure back. Okay. All right. We just hit the grill. I'm going to cut some more of that handle off. We're finally back there to where it's touching again. So we are going to have to notch one more little time. So we're right on it. So that handle, the handle is going to have to get notched again. So it's to the point now it is touching the rail. We have damaged the grill. I mean the uh, radiator. radiator, but it is touching. How much that thing left, is there? No, we're close, man. One more time and we're done. Like the inner fender, the crown vent, the front of it is like a box shape. I think that's where the... Um, windshield washer no can't remember what was what that's for but anyway it sticks out far enough to uh prevent you from getting the truck core support back far enough for it to fit so we'll take the sawzall or the cutting wheel and pack off about a half inch of that and it'll zip right it fit right in there so we got to notch the handle one more time i've got to hit this spot where it's sliced right here because that's still touching that one line and then we're we're good to go on what we've got to trim to get it to fit. This puppy dog is ready to start welding the cab now that we've got this all lined up and working. So we'll shut the video off and go grab us a bite. That's killer, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Get in there, brother. Cool. So that'll give us the room we need. Like I said, it will push back a little bit, but that at least will keep it from mashing it back out. So now we'll knock these two little pieces off up here. Two little areas we still have some contact. So this one's down in this area. close are you back on that corner? Oh, back there? Yeah. This side's pretty close. Real close. Okay. We centered pretty well. Okay. okay. We're completely clear on these lines now. That's it right there. Um, need to look at the handle. I'm touching now back there. Are you touching over there? We're clear with the handle and the radiator, not touching it. We are clear on these lines here. The power steering lines are clear. The transmission lines are clear. Uh, no worry about rubbing or causing any damage. Um, uh, I say we try to shut the hood latch. Might want to zap it with some TV blaster before we do just to get it out of that. So this will be the first time since we took the front clip off that we've tried to shut the hood or we've been even close to being able to shut the hood. 
there it is. So this side is good as far as with the hood. This side's flexed out just a smear. There we go. Heck okay, yeah. And that side stayed in too. Dude, that is lined up. We're we're there. So this has got both sides lined up where they need to be. Uh, we'll have to lift the back of that fender up just a little. But dude, if you watch that line, look at the hood coming forward from back there at the, where the cab is. Mm -hmm. But you know, the line, the body line that runs, mm -hmm. look how level this is. Once we lift that back up, this front might need to go up just a smidge. Actually, that's pretty close. Because these trucks didn't have fantastic gaps anyway. Um, this side looks perfect. Once that back's lifted, this side's perfect. So what I might need to do is add a washer underneath that rubber bushing, mm -hmm. either on the bottom or on the top, just to get us exactly where we want to be with front clip. And then we'll, of course, do a couple of supports before we uh, bolt it on. Uh, a couple of supports for the... Um, core support itself. Dude, how's that look? Wild. So we've got the front clips pretty close to sitting exactly where it needs to be in place. This passenger side looks like the front of it's going to have to come up maybe a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch. Uh, and then of course, once we lift the back up and bolt it in place, uh, but it's lined up in the back. Uh, everything's fitting good as far as where this is coming out on each side. Um, might need to go over to that side. This side's sticking out just a little, so we need to slide it to that side about a quarter inch to get it to bounce out. But man, that's that's pretty close to dead center. And that might have moved over a little bit when I mashed the hood hinge down. Um, pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah, buddy. So you're going to be sitting where you're going to have the fender about an inch from the top of the rim. Kind of how it's looking, isn't it? Yeah. And that's probably, uh, man, that looks killer. That is so cool to see the front clip on and the hood. That's some major progress there. Yep. So I say we'll call that a wrap for this video. Uh, that's showing you all the places as far as, um, uh, on the Unibody 63, going on a 2009 Crown Victoria, uh, we've shown you all the little places we have to cut and where we move the bottom radiator, uh, how we reattach that bottom part that we flipped around. Then we ended up drilling a couple of holes, moving it back uh, and mounting it with uh, some bolts we welded in there uh, to put in place for that to work. And uh, man, it's lined up great. We've got it where there's no issues. Didn't have to um, do any more cutting on the course board after those first two or three little uh, adjustments we made. And the little, like I said, we took paint and marked where we needed to cut then took it off, cut those spots out, put it back in. And then uh, we um, got it good to go. So I think we'll probably pause the video here. We'll come back and wrap this one up. All right, so we will uh, finish up this video like we try to do all of our videos with Bible verse. So if you're not into that, uh, you, you're welcome to leave the video. Appreciate you watching up to this point. If you are okay with that and want to hang around for the Bible verse, uh, this is Easter weekend 2024 when we're uh, filming this video and hopefully when we get it posted, uh, depending on how quick we can get it edited and uploaded. Uh, but for the Easter uh, Bible verse, I'm going to use Luke chapter 24, verse 6 says he is not here but is risen remember how he spake to you when he spake to you while he was yet in Galilee so uh, that's our Bible verse uh, remember uh, Easter weekend he uh, he is risen he came out of the grave and uh, he is our Redeemer our Savior and he is our hope and faith in this world and we like to share that at the end of our videos I uh, hope if you don't have a home church yourself, uh, we'd love for you to go to uh, friends, family member, co-worker, uh, give them a call this weekend, ask them where they go to church. And you are all watching this video, think of a family member, a friend, a neighbor, a co-worker, 
somebody that you know that doesn't go to church, invite them to come join you at church this weekend. There's no better time than today uh, to get somebody to come to church. And the reason most people don't go to church is because no one's ever invited them. So uh, you could be the very key to them starting to church and having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's the only thing that has eternal value. These will rust away and rot away and uh, moth and rust will destroy. Uh, but our relationship with Christ is the only thing that has eternal lasting value. Thank you guys for watching. Glad to be back on this project. Hopefully we will keep rolling on it and... Uh, now that the new baby's born, uh, our granddaughter, Laban, my son, and his wife, Myra, uh, who are the parents of Gideon, uh, my little grandson, and uh, they just had a little girl, Lydia, and she was born on March the 8th and was eight pounds. So she is actually, she'll be three weeks old tomorrow, and uh, she is doing fantastic. Thank you all for all the prayers and support during that pregnancy, and thank all you all that are friends with uh, me on Facebook and Instagram that kind of kept up with Gideon's battle when he was born. He was uh, a little preemie, two and a half pounds when he's born, and he is doing fantastic now, aren't you? Yeah. You, he's he's shy. So uh, do you want to tell him bye-bye? Yeah. Can you wave? See you guys next time. Be blessed.